Welcome to the AMGI Animation Studios Epic Summit presentation. Today we're going to show you how the Unreal Engine flows directly into the highest quality character animation pipeline. Let's check it out. Hey, bottle face! Morning, Coco! Careful, Genji! Even as the demand for animation keeps increasing, studios often find themselves resistant to new technology. We at AMGI Studios have created a unique tool set that incorporates real-time animation, art direction, and puppeteering into existing studio pipelines. Our process of using motion capture puppeteering mixed with keyframe animation while utilizing the render speed of the Unreal Engine gives us the ability to produce high quality animation at a fraction of the traditional animation time. <laughs> Expressive cartoon faces have been one of the greatest blind spots in real-time render engines, so that is where we at AMGI have put our focus. Like all animated productions, we start with an idea, a character design, a script, and a storyboard, then we build the animatic. Our modeling team creates a rough digital proxy environment for virtual location scouting. The environments are finished with substance painter textures, which are exported for both UE and any other render package if needed. Previs begins. At this stage, cameras, props, and characters are blocked out, puppeteered, and the raw motion video is sent to editorial to update the animatic. We then build our character in Maya and create a parallel version that works in Unreal. We use the Unreal Live Link Face app for real-time face puppeteering. The body performers pantomime to the audio. There, the body is retargeted to fit our characters and the takes are recorded directly into the Unreal editor. These voice and facial recordings can be pre-recorded or recorded live on stage. The character's body is captured, retargeted, and synced with the face and time code to be exported and baked to the original Maya rig for high-end animation cleanup. Our bi-directional pipeline allows for assets to flow from Maya to Unreal and back again. The Unreal animation takes are tracked with shotgun and auto-exported to Maya. In the end, the final Maya animation is exported via FBX or Lembic to render back into the Unreal Engine or any renderer of choice. Working out the art direction in real time is also a huge advantage for a global production pipeline. From AMGI's inception, our goal is to create the fastest animation pipeline from design to final render that can compete with the highest end studios using a global production pipeline. Good night, Gingy. Night, Mom. Good night, Sparkle. Good night, Gingy. Night, Mom. Good night, Sparkle. Good night, Gingy. Night, Mom. Good night, Sparkle. Now we're going to show you a work in progress from our little kaiju series called Sparkle. I love to look at the stars. Don't you, Cobalt? Yes, Gingy. The stars please me. Look at that one. That one's my favorite. That's the North Star. How do you know that? It's the only star that doesn't move. Wow. <laughs> Are you sure it doesn't move? Affirmative, Gingy. There it is behind you. Where? Over there. It just moved! I don't see it. He must be lost. Come back here, little star. Come on, Cobalt. Let's catch it. You can use my lucky jar. There it goes. Catch it! There it is! By your hand! I got it! Let me see. Look, Cobalt. I'm gonna name him Sparkle. 
Maybe you should eat it. Gingy, time for dinner. It's my mom. I need to go. Bye, Cobalt. Goodbye, Gingy. Maybe tomorrow you could eat the star. Good night, Gingy. Night, Mom. Good night, Sparkle. <laughs> Good morning, Gingy. Something's wrong with Sparkle. I think she's sick. Who's Sparkle? She's my star. I caught her last night. That's not a star, silly. It's not? No, can't you tell? It's a lightning bug. It is? Should we squish it? It probably just misses its mom. Maybe you should let her go, Gingy. Let her go? <sighs> I'm gonna miss you, Sparkle. Bye, Sparkle. Maybe we should have squished it. And here's what some of our friends think of AMGI and this new technology. So um, just to give you guys a quick little snippet of where AMGI started from, it was the brainchild of Colin Brady who wanted to make the fastest um, highest quality um, animation, but in real time and ran through the Unreal Engine. So about a year and a half ago, that was a crazy idea. And, you know, fast forward till now, um, we're getting a lot of attention because of it. So, you know, Epic has been a huge part of what we're doing. They've uh, been very, very helpful to us. They've supported us along the way. They've given us uh, mega grants and uh, just been overall really supportive. So that leads us to now and what we're here to discuss uh, for the EPIC uh, Virtual Production Summit uh, for 2020 um, and how virtual production is becoming a huge part of um, the entertainment industry and also the animation industry. A lot of what we're doing, I'd say, started a long time ago. I mean, even back on the first Toy Story, Joe and I were working together, I think the, the very first day that all the animators were hired on Toy Story and, and having a lot of fun, but very quickly, as we were getting into animation, I was noticing some of the best animation was coming from animators that were getting out of their chairs and acting out the shots with their bodies or with their hands. You know, we'd be talking about how to animate Mr. Potato Head and say, well, he basically walks like this, you know, and make sure you put his feet underneath his body. And even back then I thought, well, wait, if I just did that with my hands, why can't that already be captured and put in the computer? So putting all these ideas together mixed with the fact that now we can actually render stuff in real time using Unreal, like all these things put together is kind of where we're at at AMGI, which is real time body and face cartoon animation. Say you were creating a scene, you know, um, like that for a film using this technology. Is it that first, is it like laying down tracks and music or something that you would first start, okay, we're going to whatever means, like first we're working out the walk yep. and you get it kind of, to where you like it and then all right now we're going to lay in the facial so you do another pass where where then it's it's read from the face and then that's all kind of layered in into one complete scene or is it that you try to do all that at the same time we found the process works best with animating body and face at the same time and mm. looping the pre-recorded audio track. So we get into a booth and as the audio is looping, it's usually by the third take, we, we kind of get it. And then we save that take and then we record a second character. But essentially, once we know we have the performance, we move on to the next scene. I think also one of the things that's super great about what you're doing um, here at the studio is that with the technology you have, there's finally and uh, a chance to do things in a very improv kind of way, like mess around and come up with something that's actually funnier than what's scripted. The, the, the traditional way of doing animation is so plotted out. It's script and every single shot is plotted and it's hard to get that spontaneity, but um, really what you guys are doing lends itself to um, finding those happy accidents and those wonderful little moments that make a scene perfect 
um, and you can actually capture them in the moment. That's great. You know, I started at a very young age in the time of Steve Jobs at Pixar, where innovation was at the heart of the of everything, everything that we did. That's one of the things that um, that really intrigued me and caught my attention when starting to talk to Colin and AMGI is that it harkens back to that time of always asking the what if question, you know, like, what if this happened? What if we did this? What if we put these two things together? And um, I just love that, that kind of curiosity. Plus, you know, I mean, once you hear Colin talk just for a second, like you'd follow that enthusiasm anywhere. <laughs> so there's, there's that. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm super excited to see where this all heads and I'm along for any of it. I noticed something that was happening. It was, it was, uh, it was like a lot of like fun energy, especially since all the artists are grouped together. We were all kind of in the room together, and uh, I was just a, a lunch guest, but <laughs> but I kept coming back, and I kept coming back so regularly that I, I think you just gave me a desk, and I don't I don't even know if we ever talked that I would like be working for you. I just started working there. <laughs> Casually, but why I did is because every time I'd come back, the last conversation that you were having with the crew uh, actually was manifested the next time I showed up. I mean, it was literally made. And that was something I wasn't seeing ever. I've worked at many animation studios, just specifically animation. And oftentimes you have to create technology for one film. And mm -hmm. in the day, films used to take four to five years to make. So you're not really advancing technology um, at a rapid pace. I mean, we were on Toy Story because we had to. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing about working in an animation studio, and then I've also worked at Sony Imageworks and at ILM, which were visual effects houses, visual effects houses have to adapt very quickly because they have live action films coming in mm -hmm. with each specific need. And so their technology changes very, very quickly. And that's what I love about AMGI is that it's also, it feels like a combination of both of those things, a very, um, a studio that's kind of a visual effects um, pace of, of, of changing their technology on a rapid basis, but also with that background of really high quality animation. Animation is about evolution. You know, it's, it's, we're not doing animation the same way uh, that Walt Disney did it back on Snow White. It, it makes me think that it's like our job uh, is to tell timeless stories that will last a long time, that will seem like they'll, they'll be around for years to come. But we do that with, with breakthrough technology. And that's why I get excited about um, AMGI and just meeting the guys and the people that work there, uh, that it, it comes from a very kind of creator, you know, uh, artist-centric, you know, mm. approach to it. You know, when we talk about this stuff, I get it. I love video games, you know. I, I play video games too much, you know. and uh, having that experience, I would always think as I was playing, like, how, how are they creating graphics so quickly? And I would even wonder, like, could it be used to, you know, generate graphics for a movie to the point that when I directed Wreck-It Ralph, um, that came out in 2012, we actually considered using a game engine, you know, to, to create the graphics since it was a movie about video games. We thought, well, that's a nice tie in. We didn't do that, of course, you know, but I've always, it's always been in the back of my mind. Like, could that be a way to see results in real time? And can it be something that still includes the artist? And I feel like um, the guys at AMGI have part of that puzzle kind of figured out. It's funny because uh, it, he was even met with resistance within AMGI. I, even, <laughs> even from myself, there were times early on, it, because it moves so fast, uh, but early on we rendered one of our characters with hair and I remember just going, ah, oh, it was so disappointing. And within months, I mean, it was, it was like you turned around, hair was perfect and it was like, mm. wow. So That's... yeah, I've learned, I've become a bit of a believer myself, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I like, I mean, we, you know, we do have the ability to render things using the, the industry standard bells and whistles, all the, 
expensive Arnold or V-Ray renderers that are out there. So internally, we like to have, we like to set up a competition with ourselves. And it's a constant like little internal battle where we'll do the version as if it was rendered for a, a high-end feature film. Sometimes the, uh, the frames will take two hours of frame to render. And then simultaneously, we'll launch the Unreal team and we'll say, try to match this look the best you can. And so they'll jump right on it. And there are times I'm like, that's amazing. Or, you know, how was that rendered again? I mean, there's, there's been a couple times where I've been fooled and I'm like, was that a V-Ray render? And, uh, and when I asked them, so how many, how many seconds did it take a frame to render? And I remember one of the artists looking at me and saying, well, the whole scene took six seconds to render, like a minute long scene took six seconds for the whole scene. So um, I know we're kind of coming up to uh, close to the end here, guys. Um, but I did want to, uh, we have a little kind of thing that's a, it's kind of like a peek under the hood, if you guys are all interested to see it. Um, as a animation company and a tech company and being super creative, we've kind of been pushing forward on uh, some things that uh, we haven't really released out uh, publicly yet. And we can't really go into detail exactly how we're doing all of it, but we'd love to show you guys. It's kind of like the first ones to really see it. So what you can see here is um, Colin and one of our other, uh, uh, we call him our stage uh, animation scientist, scientist Carl. Um, they're talking into a phone and just by their face, they're driving full body animations. Oh, come um, on. Check out. <laughs> last time I, last time the phone rang and I didn't answer it, the boss was just like, hey, what are you doing not answering the phones? I'm paying you some good money. Uh, uh, at least he's paying me in bananas. Kind of reacting, but <laughs> hey, bananas. I like bananas. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, he, but, he, but he's like, yeah, you don't answer the phone anymore. You're going to be fired. Fired? Yeah, fired. That's ridiculous. Yeah, because up? you work so hard on everything, and uh, you, sh you should get, like, more bananas. And you should be, like, cool okay. with, like, whatever you do. Yeah, I should get more bananas. Yeah. <laughs> very, very hungry. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> bananas make me happy. Bananas make me very happy. Oh. <laughs> they make me so happy, I like to do a little dance. Whoa. I call it the banana dance. I think that's a pretty good taste of it. Yeah, so, <laughs> so just, wait, that's that's manipulating the arms as well as as the facial? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah, it's it's what we're doing is we're we're able to track the facial expressions, happy, sad, worried, um, yeah. thinking, and because we're it's building this arm. out of game engine, yeah, we're we're able we're able to pre-animate a bunch yeah. of a bunch of high quality animation. And that what you're seeing there is like really just the tip of the iceberg. But we can we can pre-animate little clips of the highest quality animation we want and then smartly drive motions and blend them together. And um, and it keys off of expressions, yeah. like positions. Yeah. Like yeah. so if the eyebrows go up, that means arms go yeah. up. That's exactly right. So we're using face to drive full body expressions. And we could, you know, there's, there's a big future in this that we're going to be revealing soon. This is kind of a, a separate task, but it kind of is, it is born out of the fact that we're using a video game engine. All of a sudden, all these other possibilities come mm -hmm. into play. Like, wait a second. So you could have pre-recorded animation clips. And eventually, the crazy thing, it, it, it is eventually going to a machine learning AI kind of place. Right, right. I mean, I don't, you know, what's the date? I mean, in 10 years, can we, can we use AI to generate Disney quality animation? Possibly, but yeah. none of that, but it has to first come from the inspiration of a person right. doing yeah. something. Yeah. You know, you always want to push it further. It's not, it's, it, you know, not, not always are you going to use it exactly as the actor performed it, right. but it does give you like, once again, that 60% head start, especially in terms of lip sync or overall expression, even eye darts and things like that. It's really, really a, a fun head start. So we're just we're just scratching the surface, taking that technology and now seeing what we can do. Well, I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, we're still very early with this technology, but we're looking forward to pushing the future of real-time cartoon animation. Thank you for watching this presentation from AMGI and thank you Epic for inviting us to this amazing summit. We look forward to working with many of you in the future.